Welcome to another episode of Robotics 101. Now that you've been building structures and uh, linking motors with chains, gears, and pulleys, uh, we're now going to look at how do you actually control a DC motor, uh, along with stepper motors and brushless motors. So first, let's look at just a DC motor. Controlling a DC motor is simply applying power to two leads. The absolute simplest way to do this would be to just use a switch. Simple switch can be used just toggle on or off. Now, being that this is so simple, uh, what if we need to switch it with a microcontroller? Well, to move on to that, we could use something such as a relay. A relay acts much like a switch, but it uses the output of a microcontroller to engage. If we need to control the speed of a motor, a relay is probably not gonna be our best option because of the switching speed. So that's where we would move on to something more like a MOSFET. So a simple MOSFET here, you can switch on and off with a microcontroller uh, at very, very high frequencies and uh, see seamless speed control in DC motors. Using a MOSFET relay or switch is great for controlling a motor in one direction, but in typical robotics applications, it, sometimes we'd like to go in reverse. So how is that done? Well, right here I have drawn up an array of MOSFETs. So each one of these little units is a single MOSFET arranged in a configuration called an H-bridge. Now, an H-bridge allows us to turn on certain MOSFETs to direct the flow of current through the motor. We've, we've seen in motors that if you plug in current one direction, the motor will spin clockwise. If you reverse the current, it'll spin counterclockwise or vice versa. So how we would do that in an H-bridge is we would simply, let's say we want the motor to turn clockwise. To turn clockwise, we'll turn this MOSFET on and this MOSFET on, which allows the current path from positive to come through this MOSFET, down through the motor, through this MOSFET, and down to ground. Uh, conversely, if we wanted to go the opposite direction, we would simply turn on these two MOSFETs. Now that we know what an H-bridge is, uh, to see an example of one, we have a board here that's essentially an array of MOSFETs used to create an H-bridge for a very high current motor. Now, with smaller motors, you don't necessarily need something with this much power, but it would be nice to not have to lay out a, a very complex circuit board utilizing MOSFETs. That's where we have a motor driver solution. This is our motor driver shield that has essentially all the MOSFETs built into one package. And uh, this provides easy control and easy setup for whatever applications you need using smaller motors. If you're looking for a little bit more of a enclosed solution, there's other options such as a DC motor controller like this, or even one similar to this. Each one of these motor controllers has a microprocessor integrated, which is doing all of the switching functions and monitoring uh, statuses like current, voltage, and uh, some of them even have inputs for encoders and uh, other positioning sensors. Uh, something like this could be controlled via USB or over a serial connection or even analog input. <laughs> So now that we've covered a little bit how to control a DC motor, let's look at something such as a stepper motor. Now, stepper motors are a little bit more difficult because you have to alternate the windings in certain sequences. There are controllers available that have uh, use, utilized MOSFETs um, to control the windings, but typically people uh, use integrated ICs that have all of the control circuitry built in and all of the logic logic functions. So an example we have here is our uh, simple easy driver and the easy driver essentially is all of the control circuitry on one chip with just simple GPIO inputs. So this is something that you could take directly into a microcontroller and control a stepper motor. If you're looking for something a little bit more integrated once again or industrial you could look at something like this. This is an industrial stepper motor controller, and this is something you would find in a CNC machine or um, a, a laser cutter or something more um, built and ready to go. And this would interface directly with a PC and uh, control using uh, features called micro-stepping. Now, we've had questions about micro-stepping in the past, and uh, I'll take you to the whiteboard and show you a little bit more about 
what's going on. Let's look at a simplified drawing of what's inside of a stepper motor. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, some of the coils around the outside. They're generally set up in a four pole configuration. Uh, inside an actual stepper motor, it looks a little different, but this is a very general description. And uh, essentially how a stepper motor works is as you energize a coil, so let's say this coil is energized, uh, a north and a south pole will be on opposite sides, attracting the center armature uh, to be in line. So typically if you turn one stepper coil on, the other stepper coil will be a south and a north to push to kind of help move, move things along. Now, when we get into things, uh, concepts like micro-stepping, things get a little bit fuzzier. So how micro-stepping actually works is rather than just turning each coil on 100%, what we do is we'll turn each coil on 50%. So maybe what we would do is we'll turn this coil on 100%. And then what we'll do is we'll turn this coil on about 50%. And rather than this trying to maneuver directly to the next position, it might actually hover a little bit um, uh, in between the two spots. Now, um, there's, there's lots of guides and tutorials online uh, explaining micro-stepping, so if you were to Google it, you'll find uh, plenty of really cool examples. Uh, this is where modern stepper controllers are headed, uh, because you can take a stepper motor that typically has 100 steps, and if you multiply it by 64, you can see that the resolution becomes quite excellent. <laughs> Now finally, let's look at kind of where the future's headed. Uh, brushless motors are probably the most difficult motor to control. Um, there's a lot of interesting articles and algorithms out there that are used um, to maximize the efficiency of these. Right now, um, currently the best way to control a brushless motor is to just buy a fully integrated brushless controller. Now this is probably much larger than you would actually need in most applications. This is a 250 amp brushless controller. <clears throat> Many hobby shops actually sell reasonable sized ones that are in the 5 to 15 amp. And that's typically enough to run small hobby, hobby grade uh, brushless motors that you find on quadcopters or uh, micro uh, airplanes. So now we've looked a little bit about controlling motors directly. Um, Next week what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit more about closing that loop. So using an encoder to position a motor or a potentiometer to uh, position a servo. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next episode of Robotics 101.